Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 6972 Carryover League. We are in the Wild West, America League West, uh, between the Rangers and Seattle, the battle for third place. Let's see what needs to happen for the teams to avoid elimination. We'll go to the schedule here first. Uh, this is very similar to the last um, uh, matchup between the White Sox and Brewers. Rangers are plus one head-to-head, -head, but they're a game and a half out in the standings, and they don't have home field advantage. They need to go five and three, just like the White Sox did. What happened in the White Sox series? They won at five to three. So Texas is trying to match the same performance the White Sox did. So where are we? We're in game seven, folks. I'm just going to get right into it. We're in game seven. The Rangers in Seattle have been going back and forth. No need to recap the six games. They're two gritty teams, uh, but the Rangers need to win game seven as they are a game and a half back. We'll take a look at the standings at least. They started a game and a half back. They've played six baseball games. They're still a game and a half back, folks. So the Rangers have to win game seven in Seattle. Game eight tiebreaker would be in Texas if there is one. But today in Seattle, for the Rangers, number four starter Pete Broberg for the Mariners, number three starter Luke Walker. Let's just get rolling. Dave Nelson starts it off, 67 as a K. Easy Ed Brinkman, 310, bounce to short. Mike Epstein, 510, catcher's card. This is Jim Price, who's a three, and the inning's over. Bottom of one, Ulander, 1 6, is a sky to center. Jerry Adair, 312, pops the first. John Ellis, he's kind of struggled in this series. He was a all-star game snub. He was hitting 360 at the break. The American League had five great catchers at the break. They had Gene Tennis, Carlton Fisk, Thurman Munson, John Ellis. Let's take a look at John Ellis' cards when I'm talking about this. And Ray Fossey, all hitting over 300. When do you remember five catchers in one, particularly in this era, all doing that at the same time? It's, it was kind of remarkable. But John Ellis does not go to the All-Star game with this card. Two outs in the first inning. The pitch to Ellis, 68, ball four. Joe Pepitone, 512K. Top of two. The 2020 Merrick League MVP and Lone Ranger All-Star, Frank Howard, 32, bounce to third. Merv Rittman, 48 is a walk. It'll be Hank Allen, 43, left X. In left field is Kurt Moten. He's a 4E3 in left field. That'll be a base hit that drops in. Runners on the corners for Dick Billings. Looking to bring it up. 310. Right B, excuse me, center B question mark for Merv Redman, who's pretty speedy. He's a 15 runner, 16 17. Against the Dave May arm is 1 to 15 to tag up. And we'll look over here and see if he's successful. And he's not. He rolls a 19. It's Dave May with a laser beam. Out of center field, and the Rangers cannot get on the board. Tough break for the Rangers trying to thread the needle and win this game in eight. Win this series in eight games. Bottom of two, Kurt Moten, 36 is a K. Jim Price, 2-8, is a walk. Dave May with a big throw. Base it in the center field. First and second for Dale Maxvale, 37 is a K. With two outs, it's Rick Rennick. Rick Rennick. Let's take a look at his card. It's not a particularly good card, but he is in the game because he's a right-handed batter with power against right-handed pitching, which is a weakness of Broberg's. What one five is Homer one to twelve, and that is a huge, big three-run Homer in the bottom of the second inning, and suddenly the Rangers are in deep trouble here. Down three zip. Ted Ulander. 5-11, second X. This is Nelson, who's a 40-41 at second base. That's a base hit. B Steeler. We'll try... Oh, minus one on. No, we won't. Jerry Adair, 52. This guy's right. All right, three zip. Cam McMullen. He's been playing pretty good for the Rangers. He walks on 2-11. Rich Reichert. 1-7. Let's take a look at Rick Reichert's card. He... Rick was actually a yeah Washington senator, but he you know he translates to Texas as a lot of senators do. That one seven is a two-run bomb, and the Rangers are coming back. Dave Nelson, 
35 left. Ed Brinkman, 36 is a walk. Mike Epstein, 57 is a K, and with two outs, it's Frank Howard who strikes out. Bottom of the third, John Ellis, 36, single one to 19, is a 19 in the base hit. Joe Pepitone, 210 is a single to right, two on for Kurt Moten. 311 is a hit by the pitch, and Broberg is in trouble. And we have to consider the possibility of breaking in this inning. That would be uh, 10 hits through three innings, or eight hits and four walks. He's put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight men on thus far. Bases are loaded for Jim Price. They're going to play back here. 510 Price is a catcher's card. Billings is a 3E16. You don't want an error here. You get a wild pitch. So the run will score to make it 4-2. to two. That's unearned. Makes it second and third now. Now you want to bring the infield up to prevent an easy run and scoring from a ground ball. Dave May is your batter. 49 off Broberg is a sack fly to center field. So the smart Mariners manufacture two runs without a hit here after loading the bases. And we have a runner at second with two outs for Dale Maxville. 55 is a bouncer to second. He's a 40-41 at second base and another error. Now you got runners on the corners for Rick Rennick, who had the three-run homer before. 45, bounce of the second. So, Broberg doesn't quite break, but it's a disappointing 5-2 deficit for the Rangers. Merv Rettman, leading off in the fourth, 6-11, bouncer to first. This is Pepitone, a 2-E-15 at first base, makes the play. Hank Allen, 2-7, pops to second. Dick Billings, 69, skies the center field. Bottom of four. Texas has an outstanding bullpen, so we could quick hook Broberg if it gets messy again. Ted Ulander, 47's a K. Jerry Adair, 2-4. This guy's all right. John Ellis, 1-9 single. And with two outs, it's Pepitone. 58 is a K. Broberg settles down a bit. We go to the fifth. It's a 5-2 lead. Ken McMullen leads it off. 66, a K. Rick Reichert, 2-7, a single. Dave Nelson. 1-4 for Nelson is a 6-4-3 double play. Big double play. Turn by the Mariners. And before we go to the fifth, let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. All right, bottom of the fifth. It's Kurt Moten. For the Mariners. 3-6 is a K. Jim Price. 3-11 is fly ball right B plus injury. Unfortunately, it's a homer against a lefty, but against a righty, it's a fly out. And they just lost their starting catcher. But that's okay. Ellis can, was the regular catcher. He's just bad defensively. So he's catching now. And they have a choice of players to bring in. They'll put Ron Woods in the left and let Kurt Moten be the DH. Dave Mays, the batter. 1-6, pops to first. All right. 5-2 in the sixth. Luke Walker's a starter seven. It's Ed Brinkman. 58 is a K. Mike Epstein, 1-7. Let's take a look at Epstein's card. He's been an all-star in the last two years. Homer, 1-7. Fly ball to right, but he does not come through this time. He rolls a 20. Tough break for the Rangers. Flies all right. And with two outs, it's Frank Howard. And he's sky's the center. Frank Howard has been very quiet in this series. They're your 2020 MVP. And it's also the final year of the 69 Frank Howard card. And it could be, this could be the last time we see it. So, he'll get one more at bat, at least one more at bat in this game to fix the situation. Broberg's a starter seven. In the sixth inning, if he gets in any guys on base, they'll gladly bring in Daryl Knowles, Dick Bosman, or Paul Lindblad. So let's see. Dale Maxvale. 65. Off the Broberg card. Triple 1 to 10. Double is a double. Let me take a peek at the magic. That's no, okay. Rick Rennick. Same roll. 65. 
And again, the inability to yank the pitcher at the appropriate time. 65 for the Rangers. Triple one at 10 again, and another double. And it's a 6-2 game, and I've seen enough of Pete Broberg. Unfortunately, probably should have been hooked. And it's a 6-2 game, and suddenly things are not looking good at all for the Texas Rangers. So Broberg goes five innings and a couple batters. Daryl Knowles comes on in the sixth. This brilliant Texas Ranger bullpen is probably underused this year, which is disappointing. Disappointing year for the Rangers anyway, but it's not looking good. They need a big turnaround here, or their season will end in Seattle. Runner at second, nobody out. Ted Ulander. Let put, uh, let's put a TU here, so I know who comes who comes in to face. Ulander 110 is a sky to right. Jerry Adair, 45, second C. Runner goes to third with two outs for John Ellis. 56 is a K. Knowles gets out of the mess. Six to two in the seventh. Luke Walker. You know, um, with I think the uh, Mariners are going to put a defensive guy in. They're getting cocky. They're going to take Rick Rennick out of the game and get a new third baseman. That's all the defense. So they're going full defense with nine outs to get to end the series. Mariners, believe it or not, have aspirations of advancing in the postseason tournament if they get past the Rangers, as crazy as that sounds. Their expansion counterpart, the Toronto Blue Jays, of course, were eliminated. So that's Seattle has that feather in their hat here in the top of the seventh. And you know what else? Their bullpen's not that bad either. And they're going to hook Luke Walker because of the, yeah, it's a surprising move. Luke Walker comes out after giving up just two runs. Could be overthinking this a little bit. But Diego Segui, they like his guy a lot. And they also like Lou Marone, the closer, who was an all-star. And they think they, these two guys can get this game finished. So Diego Segui comes on in the seventh against Merv Rutman. The pitch to Merv, 6-10. Bouncer to third base. This is your defensive replacement, Tom Magic. We just brought him in. He's a 3-E-8 at third base, and he makes the play. That was the right move. Hank Allen. Sagi is better against lefties and righties, so Hank Allen will bat. 54, right B, and with two outs, Dick Billings who will bat. 1-5, let's take a look at the Dick Billings card. Uh, he, this is a 72 card. He platoons with Tom Satriano, but he's starting today against the lefty uh, Walker and stays in against the righty because he's got power. This is Homer 1 to 4, fly ball to left. And unfortunately, he rolls an 18 and flies to left field. All right, bottom of the seventh, Pepitone. 1 4, skies to right. Kurt Moten, 66, double one of three, base hit. Ron Woods and then Dave May, and I think we're going to hook, quick hook on Daryl Knowles, and Dick Bosman will come on in the seventh because Ron Woods is the batter, and he's better against lefties. So Dick Bosman will come in and face Ron Woods with Kurt Moten on the first base. Ron Woods. The pitch to Ron Woods, 2-8, is a strikeout. And with two outs, it's Dave May. Dave May, 49, bounces to short. Ed Brinkman's pretty good, though, at 2-E-24 at short. But it gives up a single. Disappointing fielding there by the Rangers. Dale Maxwell with two outs. 2-7 two is a K. Six outs to go in Seattle. Diego Segui and Lou Marone limbering up in the bullpen. Ken McMullen will lead off the eighth inning for the Rangers. 37 is ball four. Rick Reichert, who is two for two. One eight. Let's take while we saw the card. Let's look at it again anyway. Here we are, another home run chance. Homer one to four, fly ball to left, and he misses it on a 16. This Seattle, we're not playing in the kingdom, folks. We're playing <laughs> in a windy, rainy, blustery ballpark where Mike Epstein's home run ball got hung up, where Dick Billings' home run ball got hung up, and now Rick Reichert's home run ball just got hung up there. Sorry, Texas. You missed three home run chances in three straight innings. It's, it's just not your year, folks. That's the way you have to look at it. 
Dave Nelson. 45. Triple one to three. Double is a double to center field. McMullen holds. He'll pitch through to Epstein here. Uh, second and third, Ed Brinkman. 34, Brinkman bounces the third. And with two outs, with a four-run lead, he will pitch to Epstein as he is good against lefties. Sagi. Mike Epstein. 411 off Sagi. Right X. All their all the outfielders are good for Seattle. It's Ulander. He's a 2-E1 in right field, and that's caught. How about the excitement in Seattle? Not finishing in last place has got to feel good. Bosman leaves after two-thirds. Paul Lindblad, come on in the eighth. Get some work in against the lefty Tom Matchick. 1-9 is a single, though, for Matchick. Ted Ulander. 1-6 is a K. Jerry Adair, 2-3, left. And with two outs, John Ellis, 39, flies a left. We go to the ninth inning, and we're going to bring our guy two innings for Sagi. It was a little scary at times, but he got out of it. But we're bringing in all-star versus all-star, Lou Marone. Lou Marone has gone to the last three all-star games for the Seattle Mariners. And yet, this young player only played in 1969 through a handful of innings for the Pirates. 35 innings, but we've used this card now three straight years, four straight years, I think. As soon as we got into the 69 set, we used it. So this is the fourth and final year of using the Lou Marone card. He's the Seattle closer. Seattle's been terrible through this whole time. He has a chance to pitch into the second round of the postseason. So it's Lou Marone in the ninth. And who leads off? in the top of the ninth for the Rangers. Let's take a look at him because this could be the last time you see this card, folks. Frank Howard's 1969 card. He had uh, in 592 at-bats, he had 48 home runs, a 296 batting average, and 102 walks. He was the 2020 MVP in my Stratomatic League. And he uh, went to the All-Star game again this year. So in all probability, this is the final at bat for the Frank Howard card. Get us a 1-5, please. The pitch to Frank Howard, 56, is a strikeout. That's all right, folks. Frank Howard will come back. He's got an outstanding 1970 card, and he pitches through to, I think, he plays through to 1972 or 73 for the Tigers. Anyway, one out in the ninth, Merv Rettman. 37, skies the left field. And with two outs, it's Hank Allen. 63 off Maroon, pitcher X. Oh boy, he's an E38. I didn't see it, notice that. The two E38, and he gets a ground ball C. So the E rating would have been between the roll, dice rolls of uh, four and 17, and he didn't roll it. Uh, that's why you see the ground ball C. As a matter of fact, what did we roll? Anytime you want to chase these results, you can just go to the field rating chart in the spreadsheet. And the 20 sided. And when you scroll down, you can figure out what was rolled. And the 20 sided right here, a 3 was rolled, and that was ground ball C. So there you are. That's the alley game ends, and that's how the Rangers' season ends. Ball game. Congratulations, Seattle. They win it in 7. And uh, they have a very good chance of winning in the second round as well. And I'm not ruling them out as, uh, for going to the playoffs. It, they'd have to thread a, a miraculous needle for that to happen, but one step at a time. Marone uh, comes on in the ninth, the four-run lead, gets a strikeout. Diego Segui, two innings, just a hit and a walk. The story was Luke Walker getting out of trouble. Enough time, just three hits and two runs. A bunch of missed home runs by the Rangers. Three walks and five strikeouts. Lindblad gave up a hit in a K. Bosman came on. Faced Ron Woods. A hit in two Ks. Lindblad gave up a hit and a K. Left Broberg in there too long, unfortunately. Gives up eight hits and six runs. He's a pretty decent pitcher, though. He'll be back. And uh, of those six runs, 
only four are earned. He walks three, strikes out six. One double oh nine oh one oh eight six eleven two four four six three ten three ten four six. So we know a little bit more about the Seattle Mariners. They have surprisingly good pitching. Their offense has got some better hitters than you think, and they've got good defense in spots. So they're they're a tough out. I think we've seen them frequently here on Seattle on uh, on YouTube, and they've been a tough out the whole time. So they win the series four games to three, so that means they're two and a half games ahead of Texas with no game eight to play. Yeah. Let's start with the Rangers. They finished the season 16 and 22, hitting 247 with a 372 ERA. Not much to talk about for pitching. Uh, uh, Epstein finishes the year with 10 homers and 26 RBIs. Frank Howard finishes the year with just 8 homers and 23 RBIs. He had over 20 homers last year, so a big drop off there. Your Seattle Mariners are now a game under 500 at 19 and 20. And they'll play a team in the, in the American League North that's not particularly good either, and will probably be a best of five, a lackluster uh, second round postseason tournament series. These Mariners are hitting 242 with a 398 ERA. Uh, Lou Marone, the closer we talk about, has eight saves and an ERA of under three. Um, Steve Klein and Lockwood have been decent starting pitchers. What's John Ellis hitting now? I know he struggled a little bit, but he's still 58 for 160. 58 for 160, he'll hit you 363 every time. So Ellis is still, dare we say it, up there in the, I guess, the MVP consideration, though. Yeah, if Rod Crew's hitting over 400, I think we can get rid of John Ellis from the MVP conversation. But 58 hits is, well, you know, he has a chance for the hits title in the league because he plays every day and he has 58 of them through 39 games. That's very impressive. Let's um, look here. So this is how the America League West finishes through the first round of the tournament, which means Oakland finishes in second place, just a game over 500. Seattle, you flip this result, it's just a game under 500. Your second and third place teams, <laughs> the dynasty Oakland A's versus a Seattle Mariner team that didn't exist yet. So that's a little alarming, huh? So these teams will play these pretty yucky teams up here. Not the Tex not the Tigers, because they're in first. We haven't sorted it yet. But a, some combination of these teams. Whoever survives the Expo Indian battle. So the A's will have play the weakest of those teams and the Mariners will play the best of those teams. It's, it could very well be that Seattle at a game under 500 plays a team here that's also going to be under 500. I mean the Ohio players are 5 under, the Expos 4 under, the Indians 8 under. So Seattle could be favored in their second round tournament matchup. If they survive that it'll get a lot more difficult in the third round because then we'll have teams like oh, the Orioles and the Yankees as their opponents. And they might have a unrealistic mission to, I don't know, win like 12 in a row or some ridiculous assignment that they can't fulfill. But anyway, we're having fun with it at least now, tonight, and uh, we'll see the Mariners again. Uh, you can root for them to be your Cinderella. I don't think they quite have enough gas to be a Cinderella, but there you go. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you next time.